Hi guys, and welcome to a new video series I'm going to start. Um, this thing was inspired by me, a conversation that guy was having on Facebook. Um, I'll put his name in the description of this, but we were discussing what's better, the Egyptian God cards or the Sacred Beast. Why is there a water droplet on the sleeve? Sorry about that, that is not the best way to show him off. He could now see. Anyways, we're talking about which one was better. The Egyptian God cards or Sacred Beast. Now, anime-wise, we can all agree the God cards were way better. 100%. However, card-wise, is where it's a toss-up. Because Obelisk is better than all five of these guys here. And why is that? Because of Obelisk's effect. He's one of the only god cards that cannot be targeted by card effects. And that stays with him. Also, you tribute two monsters, he destroys all cards on the field. I mean, all of your opponent's cards. He can't attack after that, but that's still good if your opponent's got a full field. And most of them are like goblins, can't be targeted by effects, wipes them all out. Now, as far as the others go, I believe Haman is better than Ron Slyther and the other two. And the reason I say Haman is because he could be special summoned by Sand 3, face up continuous spell cards to the graveyard, which that's not really that hard. Bam, bam, just set him out. There you go. Then you have an extra normal summon. On top of that, when he attacks one of your, or he destroys one of your opponent's monsters, they lose a thousand life points. If you have him in defense, your opponent can only attack him so he does protect your monster. Now, his summoning can be negated, whereas the god cards can't. But, unlike Cypher Ra, he doesn't require anything extra to get the power boost that he has. He already has 4,000 attack, 4,000 defense, which is crazy. Where Cypher and Ra require... Well, Cypher requires cards in your hand, and Ra requires life points. I'll get on when I get to them why that's a bit of a pain in the arse compared to the other two. Now, the next one is Raviel. Raviel is the next best one because he requires just three fiend monsters to tribute to special summon him. Now, while that is a bit more difficult to get out than um, uh, Haman because, well, there you go, you gotta summon a fiend and hope he's able to special summon two other fiends. Now, I'm just going this based on their effects, not based on the support they got or nothing, it's just based off their effects and how they are standing alone. But it still has a special summon. And there are cards that allow you to summon multiple monsters from that normal summon, but since he's a special summon, you can still summon him. On top of that, each time your opponent summons a monster, normal summon, not special summon, so if they special summon a whole field full, doesn't work, but each time they normal summon a monster, you can special summon one phantom token to your field with house attack and defense, and this age, tokens are awesome. Everyone uses tokens for... Uh, Link Summon, Synchro Summon, and other types of stuff. On top of that, he also has the effect where you tribute one monster on the field, and he gains attack, the original attack of that monster, add on top of his. So you could tribute another Raviel, or Haman, or any other monster, and he gains that attack along with his, which can make him a pretty big beefy boy, capable of a one-hit KO. Next up, we have Slifer the Sky Dragon. Which to me is better than Ra. And the reason why Slifer is better is because of his additional effect. Now like all of them, um, his summoning cannot be negated. Requires three tributes. That's normal with the Egyptian gods. However, this card gains a thousand attack for each card in your hand. And if a monster is normal summon or special summon to your opponent's field in attack position, that monster loses 2,000 attack. If its attack is reduced to zero, you destroy it. So, that potentially right there can help keep him on the field longer. However, it also requires your hand to have a lot of cards for him to be strong enough to stay on the field long enough to use that effect. But, um, as I said, it's, you need three materials to bring him out, and then after you bring him out, you're left, if it's your first turn, left with one card. If it's your second turn, left with two cards. Unless you happen to have draw power. But I was going based off of what you would have at that point in time. So he's on the field at 1,000 attack. 
but his effect does reduce attack by 2,000 and destroys them. So unless the monster they summon has zero attack or enough to survive it, he can keep your opponent from doing some of their combos. But the difference between him and Obelisk is the fact that he can still be targeted by card effects coming your opponent's turn. So once they draw a card, they get to make any card effect to take him out. And that really sucks. They should have made the Egyptian gods a lot stronger than what they are. Next we have the Winged Dragon of Raw, which means a toss up between him and Yuri about about which one's worse. The reason I say that is because of the Winged Dragon of Raw's ability. Like the others, three tributes to bring him out, but he cannot be special summoned. He cannot activate Monster Reborn and bring him out. Now he gains life points equal I mean he gains attack points equal to your life points. Which can make him a pretty big boy. However, his second effect makes no sense in the world to be on this card. Pay a thousand life points to destroy one of your opponent's monsters. Sorry about that abrupt pause. Anyways, um, pay a thousand life points to destroy your opponent's monsters. But that makes no sense at all. Because you already spent 7,000... 900 life points to make this guy a big guy his second effect doesn't do anything it really doesn't and even if you don't spend that much to recuse the second effect you gotta save up enough life points to where you can destroy the cards on the field to hit your opponent with enough damage to where you gotta worry about retaliation next turn because that's the problem with raw right there in my opinion is his effect does not go well at all it clashes with his other effect. They should have never done that to Rob. If they were going to do something like that, it should have been the three monsters you tribute to bring him out, he gains their attack. And then he has this effect. That would have been, that would have made more sense. It would have been too overpowered. But no, they had to screw Ra over. He used to be one of those powerful Egyptian God cards, and well, you see what they done to our boy. They made him a weakling. But, Ra to me is the worst out of the Egyptian gods, and these two, Raviel and Haman, are better than Ra, Bear Cipher. Now, to the worst of the six, we have Uriah, Lord of Searing Flames. And the reason why he's the worst is because, despite all the cards conditions to summon, he is the most difficult because he requires three face up trap cards you control to special summon him. And. He gets dial type for each continuous trap card in your graveyard. Once per target, you target one set spell or trap card your opponent controls. Destroy the target near player can activate spell or trap cards. Response to effect. So, his last effect. That's a good effect. But the problem is, is the fact he requires three face up trap cards. Which means you have to set it and then flip it during your opponent's turn and hope it stays on the field long enough for you to bring him out. It's not a quick effect, so you can't do it during your opponent's turn. Has to wait till your turn. Then on top of that, gets a thousand attack for each continuous trap card. Why? In the anime, he gained a thousand attack for each trap card. I continuous each trap card. Konami would have not been making him overpowered if they still did that. But anyways, I'm getting. Oof. I just hate how they did the Sacred Beast and I hate how they did the Egyptian gods. But in my opinion. Obelisk, yes, is better than all six of these guys. But I do believe that Raviel and Herman are better than Slifer and Ra. Just because their effects, well, the fact they can be special summon, it's not that hard to get them out. And they already have 4,000 attack and 4,000 defense. Whereas Slifer and Ra, you gotta, you gotta have life points and cards in your hand to make them strong enough to survive on the field to use them. Because even... Even without effects, try to get over a 4,000 attack point beat stick. That's pretty hard to do. It really is. If you ain't got no cards that can just take them off the field, you gotta try to attack over them. Getting past 4,000? Guy pain. But, anyways, guys, that's just. Well, I just wanted to discuss this. Like I said, I think all six of these cards are awesome in their own special way. But at the end of the day, I just wanted to state that I think Opus is the best. Out of all six, I think Rabbi Al Haman are the next. I think Cypher is the best. And then it's a toss up between Uriah and the Winged Dragon of Ra. 
because they both have one good effect and other terrible effects that screw them up so bad. Uh, anyways, I just want to discuss these cards. Uh, and I plan to do this on other cards. And the guy I do this with is probably going to respond to this. I hope you enjoyed the video, guy. I can't wait to hear your thoughts on them. Thanks for watching. Bye. Uh.